Hey guys, so next talk up is the GSOC panel. Uh, I'd like to have all the students here in the front because we will have to switch uh, rather quickly. And whoever is standing in uh, for his student, uh, Michael, I think, and anybody else? Uh, you could come here. This will be uh, have less friction. Okay, so the, the order will be uh, um, Bastak with a firebird, um, then I think Michael standing in for Ezopit, uh, then Jakub. Jakub, sorry. <laughs> yeah, sorry. I, yeah, this, uh, well, um, I mean, you, you choose your nicknames, so I will just address you with the nicknames. I think that's <laughs> that's easier. Um, yeah, just just look at the that's the that's the order um, that we will run this through. Okay, Michael, want to join the fun? Look like a student. Yeah. <laughs> I think you are number three. Number, number three. three. Number two. Yeah. Two, two, because Alex is not here. Cool. So, yes, welcome. I think it's uh, 1400. Uh, this is the GSOC uh, 2016 panel session where we have all, or almost all, students uh, on stage to present their successful GSOC projects. Thanks so much, Google, uh, for sponsoring. Thanks a lot to all the mentors for uh, investing time and energy um, and uh, sometimes sleep <laughs> to, uh, to keep this going. Uh, congrats to all the students uh, for making GSOC. Um, wonderful. So, um, yeah, with that, I'd like to kind of... Oh, right. So, uh, you have exactly five minutes. And after six minutes, we will cut you off hard. <laughs> Otherwise, we're not making this. We have eight eight talks and um, one hour to go. Um, cool, so, Firebird. Uh, hi, I have a slide, maybe. Um, yeah, thank you. Uh, so, um, yeah, I'm Damash Bunt, and uh, I had a, a mm, Summer of Code project with the title Finnish Firebird integration. Um, Firebird is an open source uh, database management system uh, written in C++. And um, uh, currently the, uh, um, the database system which is used to, uh, which, uh, which LibreOffice uh, uses to, uh, as an embedded uh, database at default is uh, HSQLDB, uh, uh, which is a bit unfortunate because it's uh, based on Java. So the main uh, main purpose uh, is to uh, was to uh, bring a, a Firebird the Firebird driver to a state uh, that uh, it can be uh, suitable for. The, that, uh, as a, a default embedded uh, database, and as, uh, but there were uh, uh, some problems with the Firebird uh, driver. Uh, first of all, I uh, made an upgrade uh, uh, from version 2.5 to 3, um, which made uh, some uh, more uh, possibilities with the uh, Firebird. Uh, for example, I could fix the next issue, uh, which uh, was that um, um, the Firebird databases are uh, dependent dependent uh, of the uh, from the um, uh, platforms and the NS. So, if you uh, made an embedded database uh, in a, a big NDN. Uh, platform, then uh, move the o o ODB file uh, to a little NDN one, then it uh, failed to open. Um, and uh, 
uh, there were uh, Firebird related bugs. Uh, there are uh, still some, but uh, I saw some. Uh, for example, uh, I uh, implemented the auto increment uh, feature, and uh, there are uh, some more things to do. Uh, for example, to switch to the C++ API, which is available uh, from Firebird uh, 3. Um, I'd like to do that in the future. And uh, there is a problem that uh, uh, the, uh, it's not implemented that uh, the uh, Firebird should work with remote databases. So that's another thing to do. And um, uh, the new Firebird uh, cannot open the uh, old uh, Firebird databases. The official way to solve this is to uh, um, uh, uh, back up it with the old uh, Firebird and then um, uh, it, it can be restored by the new one. Uh, I, I'd uh, like to do an external tool uh, for that, maybe a, a web service. And uh, <laughs> uh, I'd like to thank for the community because it was uh, really helpful and my mentor, Lionel. And yeah, thanks. Thanks for a very good project and we look forward to see more patches from Noob. The next one is Michael. He's not the GSOC student, he's representing. If only youth is wasted on the young. They say. Anyway, perfect. Um, so, Mahari did some great work. He showed up that the, the essential problem we're solving here is that we have a very fast parser that does threaded parsing and, in theory, has a constant time to parse an infinite sized file because it does it in a, a thread. Um, and we're not using it for ODF, we're using it for the Microsoft formats, which is bad. We don't want to load XLSX faster than ODS, do we? So, um, so his, his job was basically to retrofit this, to use it for the uh, ODF filters. And the fast parser does tokenization as well, and the ODF filters do tokenization. And previously, we'd had a, an approach which was a one-shot, do-everything-at-once type approach. And this never got merged because everyone's too scared. Um, so he came up with an incremental approach. And we started looking at spreadsheets, just very large, because uh, they're, they're big consumers and producers of data and uh, trying to accelerate just the inner uh, you know, cell uh, storage for you know, numbers and, and simple text and so on. Um, and he's done great work. So he reworked, um, he reworked the fast parser to add the ability to emulate the old API on top of the fast parser. So we, we parse, we tokenize, we detokenize, and we emit it again. And it sounds stupid, doesn't it? But anyway, it, it was approximately the same speed as the old uh, parser, which is, uh, which is quite good. Um, uh, slightly slower, but well, what, what do you get? And currently, we're, he's, he's punching through that to avoid uh, detokenizing and retokenizing inside the ADF uh, parser, uh, just for a few of those, those things. And it's looking pretty good. So I'm happy. All of the patches have been merged as he's gone along, so it's all there in master for 4.3, and I've got three minutes, but I'm nearly done. So it's good. I'm, 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 I'm happy. He's, and he's continuing to work and fix and improve it. So what a guy. Thanks. Thanks, Mahavad. And continuing to work is, of course, what, what we really like. <laughs> uh, hi. My name is Jakub. Uh, I was working on table styles with uh, my mentors, Jan, Yusuf, and Miklos. Uh, the project uh, target was to implement the table styles for the writer. The first uh, thing was to implement the export and import of table styles. And the second uh, was to implement the table styles in the sidebar and uh, implement the table styles drop down menu mm, the export and import to the ODF is uh, is implemented as a table template element export uh, it it had to be expanded to the 
extra low x namespace because the other uh, specs uh, only allowed didn't allow to export all the properties which the writer's core had. It had to be expanded by six properties. And you can see the low, low X first row, last row. And the sidebar. The sidebar is implemented, but it's not full finished because you cannot Okay, I will talk what it allows already. It allows to uh, browse the styles and filter uh, the applied styles, apply a style to a table, update a style by example, and uh, hide a style. Uh, when the cursor is in table, the style gets highlighted in the sidebar. As you can see on the right is the styles and formatting, sidebar, uh, table styles tab. And uh, it's not finished, uh, it's missing the table style and the dialog to edit properties of the table style uh, because it now crashes uh, crash when you try to edit the properties. And the drop down menu is uh, not yet finished but I plan to do this. Uh, so that was my project. Uh, I plan to work uh, more on this and finish it. Thank you. Hello everyone. Uh, my name is Szymon Kwos and uh, I was working on infrastructure for defining toolbar uh, via .ui files. Uh, my mentors was, uh, were Candy and Samuel. So uh, the goals of my project. Uh, I wanted to uh, prepare uh, infrastructure for uh, defining rich and dynamic toolbars. Uh, this was, uh, this uh, had to have to be uh, easy to modify in the Glade because uh, we wanted to change the interface without coding. So uh, we, we also uh, wanted to uh, handle the context to uh, change the content uh, of the toolbar and uh, layout should be ac according to screen size. Uh, so here we have the results. Uh, we have uh, three uh, different implementations merged to master and uh, I was working mainly on the first one because uh, the other one uh, uh, other ones are uh, only prototypes uh, prepared uh, to show the concepts uh, so uh, while working on this project I had to convert some uh, pop-ups because uh, they were they w was working only in the uh, sidebar so uh, I have to uh, I had to write uh, new controllers and uh, after this conversion uh, they can be inserted into toolbar notebook bar and si sidebar uh, I also noticed that uh, in sidebar we have pretty fidgets uh, in the impress so I uh, reused the uh, code and prepared the horizontal uh, versions of these widgets so we can sim simply insert them to the uh, notebook bar. Uh, as, as, uh, as I said, uh, I was working on context handling, so uh, some concepts uh, have static part and uh, dynamic part which is uh, depending on the con context. So uh, when user uh, is focused on the uh, ta uh, table, he may want to uh, add some rows and uh, columns, not uh, form format the text. So 
I uh, added, uh, extended the uh, VCL builder to parse some additional uh, marks with uh, context in name, and then uh, uh, I created new uh, container which shows only these uh, uh, childs wi which uh, have uh, correct uh, context. Uh, also, I uh, prepared a special container for uh, hiding uh, some uh, widgets when we don't have enough space. So when we resize the window and uh, we don't have en enough space, uh, we will see a small arrow. Uh, and after clicking on uh, that arrow, uh, we can uh, we can see a new pop-up with the content with the, with the content uh, of container. I also uh, added an option to change icon size in the sidebar and notebook bar. Uh, as I said, uh, we have multiple implementations. Uh, we can switch bet between them uh, from the view menu. They are described in the XML files. Uh, also, we have switched to uh, turn on the notebook bar and uh, other, other uh, modes like single toolbar mode or, or sidebar mode. They are also described in the XML files. And what, what next? Uh, notebook bar still needs some uh, work. Uh, we want to uh, make uh, notebook bar uh, possible to uh, customized by user. Uh, Jay Phillips proposed uh, to describe this uh, this uh, widget in XML files. We also want to uh, make them uh, possibility to uh, uh, for uh, extension developers to add content to notebook bar, and we need uh, to pre uh, make. A, uh, better accessibility for keyboard users. Thank you very much. So hello, I am Akshay, and my project was uh, we're designing the template manager, and my mentors were Samuel and Yusuf. Uh, so this was the proposed user interface uh, for my design idea. Uh, for my project, uh, and uh, the you can see the how it got implemented and its final version, that it's in the master now. So there were quite a few changes. Some people like it and some don't. <laughs> so uh, basically, in the previous template manager, we had a folder view in which we can see the uh, templates are contained in those folders. But basically, we had replaced that folder view to uh, in which now we directly see the templates. As you can see here, and the folders are shifted to this uh, category uh, combo box. And now uh, we have removed the save as template mode from the template manager. And uh, we have also added some filters like search filter, application filters, and category filters to differentiate between uh, different kinds of templates. And um, most of the functionalities have been shifted to context menu. And now we also have. Uh, an option to edit a template which is not in the template repository of the template manager. And uh, there have been some other bug fixes like uh, um, we have removed the save as template uh, mode from the template manager and we have shifted it to a new dialog, which I'm going to describe later. So yeah, moving other. Uh, now uh, the template manager has uh, another state to show uh, whether a template is selected and it's, it is over or not. Uh, so it was a much demanded feature in some of the bugs uh, to differentiate between uh, different uh, templates, whether they are selected, whether they are not selected, or they are just forward. So basically, uh, it was uh, finished. And then we have a save as template dialog. Uh, and uh, it was one of the most important uh, task of our um, of my project to implement this because uh, most of the people, uh, people, users were con uh, complaining about that the previous workflow is not as good as it needs to be. So we basically uh, created it from scratch and uh, we separated this functionality 
from the template manager. Now, uh, all and we also have an option to set it, uh, the template as default. And now, uh, I have made some few changes in the start center. Like uh, this, uh, changes were directly copied from the template manager and then uh, integrated into the start center. And we also have the toggle buttons now to indicate that which whether we are showing the recent files or we are showing the template manage, uh, templates uh, view in the thumbnail part of the start center. And now, uh, basically, um, a major change through my project was that uh, we replaced the presentation wizard with an impress, selection, impress template selection. Whenever you open impress now, uh, you will see a, uh, a pop-up dialog which uh, asks you to whether you want to select a template or not. And it is enabled by default. If you want to that dialog to not to show, so you just have to uh, uncheck the checkbox there and then uh, it won't appear again. But yeah, um, basically removing the presentation wizard was our first idea. So mm. now moving on, uh, there was another project which was Emoji Toolbar Control and uh, I had Samuel mentoring me and Yusuf for the UI part. Uh, it was an enhancement uh, which is available in Writer, Impress and Calc and it is uh, basically, I have put it in the standard bar. Uh, it can be changed uh, from now on. So, uh, mm, yeah. So emojis appear as a grid, just like in uh, any other control in some other softwares. Uh, we have tabs to separate different kinds of uh, emojis based on their categories, and we can insert emojis. Uh, basically, what we need to know that these emojis are not images; uh, they uh, uh, they are just font characters. So we can play with them. We can uh, color. Uh, then we can change the background size, subscript them, superscript them, and uh, does these emojis are font dependent. So yeah, S mm, so it won't support every font. So we are uh, we package another font with the emoji control, uh, so that uh, it it we don't create a bu any bug <laughs> or anything. So the foundation has been built now. Uh, there are further improvements on this project like uh, removal of duplicate GIFs and support for SVG emoji, which is an important task to work ahead, and I am planning to do work on it. So yeah, for further insights, you can look at the blogs if you want to know more. And here are uh, some miscellaneous tasks, like go to page dialog and some work fixing. And yeah, thanks. Shall I begin? Good afternoon. My name is Jaskaran. Uh, I are Cynic JBSG, and uh, I had been mentored by my, my uh, mentor, uh, Marcus Morehart, for the project Import Cell Styles into Calc using Orcus. So, uh, two things Cell Styles and Orcus. I'll explain them both. Uh, cell Styles um, a set of attributes. Like here, you see uh, the uh, blue background with a wavy underline and um, red underline as well, and the dollar sign, comma, and the Dot, these all are uh, attributes, and together they are a style. You combine them, in, them into a style. The second thing is Orcus. It is a standalone filter library written in C++, multi-threaded. Started out as a fun project of Kohai Yoshida. Now has around four or five active contributors and hosted on GitLab. So you can check it out. Uh, features. Uh, it provides some import filters like ODS, Open Office XML, XLS, plain text, generic XML, genomeric XML, provide some parsers like CSV, YAML, XML, JSON, CSS. So almost all major filters and uh, parsers are provided. Um, so here's the interesting part. Working of cell style import. So what we do is uh, whenever you open a new file, or uh, ODS file, and uh, every, um, the code goes through all of the things and then the control moves to doc shell. Here we pass, here we use the API of Orcus and we pass the um, address of the file we want to import and we pass a, we create a handle, handle class and, the, and we pass the uh, address of that handle class to Orcus uh, so that we can later receive callbacks. Um, then it moves uh, to Orcus and um, using the low level pass it uh, imports the data from XML file 
reduces callbacks. And here we have the AUKUS interface, which we have impl uh, implemented in this project. Um, and this AUKUS interface actually creates the styles, and then which you can uh, obviously see, uh, see on the screen. Um, so you might be thinking, why we use AUKUS? Why not the um, in the things that already are there in the LibreOffice? Because uh, you know it's slow with all the things like uh, broadcast and everything. Um, the code of UNO you know, is not uh, reusable, uh, so AUKUS, is, uh, AUKUS provides an API so that we can use it. Um, AUKUS is time and memory efficient. It uses some uh, nice data structures. Um, the uh, temporary string allocation is very low, so uh, it's memory efficient. It's time efficient as well. So that's the main thing. What's in store for you? Of course, less clicks is less annoyance. So you just need to... Uh, the styles would be listed in a drop-down box. You can just click on them um, and do your work. So, of course, cl uh, earlier we had like three or four styles like default, heading, result, result one. Uh, th they were not really useful, to be honest. But now you would have beautiful uh, 10 or 12 maybe styles which are uh, made by the UX team. Um, the, the best part is you can change these uh, existing styles according to your own needs. Now as a user, uh, individual user, you may not need to change these, but as an organization, you may need to change these. I'll show an example. Um, like here you see, you created a uh, spreadsheet. Um, the heading is uh, in green background and the uh, salary is written in pink. Now suppose you are using this uh, in Japan office, you would need yen instead of dollars. You can just change that XML file so you, uh, next time you open your uh, calc or spreadsheet, you can have the style with yen instead of dollars. So that's the uh, advantage of maybe importing through styles and not having the uh, hard-coded styles. Um, so here's the location. Uh, in the share calc, uh, you can, uh, styles.xml, uh, here's the styles.xml. So, um, the one thing that you need to know is uh, don't change the name of this file uh, because the name is hard-coded. Um, if you change it, you won't be able to import. Um, font, fill, cell, number, format, alignment, borders, underline, strikeout, all these are imported. And there are some things that we don't import, like conditional format, um, alignment, various trivial attributes. Um, but I think conditional format would be available to the next uh, release. Yep. Um, this functionality is currently not available because it fails a unit test, and that unit test uh, actually has nothing to do with it. It's a LibreOffice kit test, but we don't know why it fails. Uh, maybe some uncaught exception or some dependency issue. Uh, we are looking into it. Uh, we'll solve that uh, till this uh, weekend, maybe. Um, so use this as much as we want when it's available. Uh, Report bugs to us on Bugzilla, and uh, and you can also tell us what styles you want so that we can uh, import those attributes uh, next time when we release the AUKUS. And of course, uh, you find a bug and you fix it no yourself. Nothing better than that. So contribute to Calc and AUKUS. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I'm Sushobhan Ghosh. I worked on the project uh, review of sidebar and its functionality. My mentors were Boobly and Jay. Jay is not here, I guess. So uh, first of all, I'll begin with my introduction. I'm a third year student, junior year at IIIT Hyderabad. Um, and before I begin show showcasing my work, I'd like to thank my mentors, obviously, because they've put up with me, I've asked silly questions. Also, the design team and the development team the channel, uh, some people were annoyed, I guess, when I asked stupid questions. So uh, thanks to all of you, and thank, thanks to the community for inviting me here and for, to present my work. And uh, basically, the outline of my presentation will be just screenshots and few details, nothing more, because it's a UI project. And uh, for more details about my project, you can visit my blog. It will have detailed description of all the features I've developed. And you know, I'll just briefly explain them here. 
Uh, so the first thing uh, which I'd like to explain is the page deck for writer. Uh, currently, in, in writer, you, you'll, you'll, you'll have the page property panel, which provides the basic bare minimum uh, quick changes to the writer doc. So if you, if you want more features, so this is coming up in 5.3. So you can change the size, width, height. You, you have four panels here. You can enable the header, footer. You can change styles, and you have format panel. So all the quick settings for writer are present in this whole panel. And these four panels are together in a deck called the page deck. So uh, this was the first uh, thing which I developed. Next up was I, I improved on the properties panel for impress and draw. So uh, uh, I, I, I added the master slide button over there, and there were a few more bugs. So these were f this was first developed by Rishabh Kumar, and then Bubli uh, and Jay worked on it and finished it and merged it to master. So I took off from there, and this was then enabled for draw. So this panel just slide is not written pages. It's called the page property panel in draw. So you might be f uh, if you if you open 5.3 master, then you, you you'll be able to find it there. Uh, next up was the shape stack and the default shapes panel. So the shape stack was supposed to have two panels by now, but only one panel. Uh, I was I was able to manage just one panel till uh, throughout the summer. So that was the default shapes panel. The other one is work in progress. This one has all the default shapes which you could find on the left hand toolbar, shapes toolbar. So it has ten categories and one fifty three shapes. You can just select it and draw it in your draw document. Uh, next up was the media playback panel. I guess many users were reporting that the media toolbar at the bottom used to take up a lot of space. So this was designed as you, when you select the media, it will pop up on the right-hand side in the properties deck. So you can play, pause every feature that you could find in the media toolbar. You can find it here. So we, we are going to disable the media toolbar button, uh, media toolbar at the bottom. So it might save you some space on the screen. Uh, at the end, uh, I, I, I made two more adjustments. I added the import uh, button to bitmap on the area fill uh, panel. And there was a show preview checkbox. So this was important because one had to restart LibreOffice to check and uncheck uh, the previews on the right-hand side in the styles and formatting sidebar. So uh, this was all. Uh, Yes. So uh, apart from that, like from now on, I, I'm currently working on the other QA issues. Jay prepared a doc for me. So I'm fixing that. And uh, most of these panels are arriving in 5.3. Um, yeah, use these panels, I guess, and report bugs, and perhaps contribute to sidebar development. That's all, I guess. Thank you. A big, a big thank you to all the students who have given us new wonderful features. This was my first year in LibreOffice uh, helping making Geese, GeeSock be a success. And I'm happy to say that we had the highest number of applicants this year. So we are known by the students out there. I also, as a Ge GeeSock administrator, have to say, we lack mentors. <laughs> we, we, the way it was done this year by combining UI people and development people have really paid off. It is more resource demanding, but it's also less use of each mentor. So please, please, next year, think of whether you can give a hand and help us. I'm sure if we get more mentors, we can also get more slots in uh, Google. So, as a final thing, I don't, Torsten, do you have any final words? He's hitting as normal. So, um, yeah, nothing really to add. So uh, thanks, Jan, and uh, also Mogi for uh, co-running the, um, the program. 
Uh, there's always quite some admin work in the background, and I'm happy that um, I could, share, could have shared that load. Um, so I think we have some time. I don't know if there's questions still from, from the audience or, I don't know, feedback in any, of any kind. Something which we yes. Just to say that I'm really impressed, and uh, I'm really <laughs> impressed by by all the work and uh, the mentoring being done, and uh, also uh, Jay, who's not here but maybe listening to a stream, uh, who helped a lot with all the UI stuff. Wonderful. Anybody else? Okay, so end of this year GSOC means start of next year GSOC, um, as mentioned. So keep the ideas coming. Um, if there's no further questions, I'd love to have all students on stage again so that you can get your applause that you deserve. Yeah, thanks guys, you've been wonderful. Thanks so much. Looking forward to uh, more good work from you. Hat tips.